is uh, funded by the lottery through the Northern Ireland Film and Television Commission and one of their requirements is that as many people um, involved in the film are from Northern Ireland so um, all our crew members with the exception of Andrew and myself and the sound mixer in London everybody is from Northern Ireland. The director of photography um his basic main job, he, his or her main job, is to visualise the script and bring it to the screen. Uh, it's all about shots, uh, the look of the shots, the, the lighting, um, and just the overall style and tone of the film. Okay, um, Connor, this, this seems good for my position here. My name is Darren Fee, I'm the first assistant director on Endgame. I work closely with the director and the crew in terms of scheduling the shots, which have to be shot in any particular day, and through the various different departments, communicate, or communicate with each of them in order to make sure that what we have to shoot is shot. Okay, one more rehearsal, please. Sean, take your mark. Thank you. Set. A producer's role is very organisational. Um, you start from the beginning of uh, the concept of the film um, and you organise getting funding. Um, then you go into pre-production where you recruit everybody to work on the film. Uh, you're the head of the production and you oversee everything from pre-production, so production also during uh, when we're filming, and post-production, so you liaise with the laboratories and the editors and make sure everything goes smoothly. In terms of the cast, uh, we would never really have considered using any actors who weren't uh, from Northern Ireland. We wanted them to be genuine. We've seen a lot of different people uh, for all the roles. Um, the people we have chosen um, have been chosen because um, either they were exactly how Andrew imagined them to be when he was writing the script or because they had um, the sufficient talent to be able to make their part totally believable. The part of Martin is a very difficult part to play. It's also the lead part. It's an ambiguous role because he starts out being a family man, so the audience has to believe that he's a really nice person, and that's why you see him interacting with his daughter in the way you do at the beginning of the film. Then go inside, sweetheart, and get dressed. However, he also has to be able to pull off the fact that actually, deep down, he's lying about who he is. I think we managed to uh, get across this sense of portrayal uh, in the audience by getting the audience to root for character but showing him as Mr Average, Mr Normal, somebody that we could see in the chippy or somebody that we could see in the supermarket or whatever and then seeing him doing something that's extraordinary. I feel the wall feels sorry for Martin because even some of the characters who are acting uh, with me feel sorry for me. You know, we talk about the characters, we talk about character relationships, and, they, and, I, and, and, and I said to one of the characters who's questioning me, who's going to kill me, uh, I said, do you feel sorry for me? Would you give me another chance? And he said, he looked at me and he said, yeah, I think I would. Last chance, then. Names! Three. God, I don't know anything. Just leave him be. Will you get out of here? But you don't know him from Adam. Michael was the only one that got a good look at the guy. Now, Paddy Jenkins, who is playing Mac, is not your stereotypical uh, hard case. Um, he's sort of top, he's it? smaller, um, and he's actually used to playing more um, comic roles. But he's very, very good at pulling off the threatening and uh, frightening character of Mac. Paul Kennedy was not our first idea of who we would have to pay play Ryan but when he actually started to speak through the lines and to work with Paddy um, it just seemed to have that natural chemistry that you need to make the film work. I'm not going to get involved in anything. Pack it up lads we've been grassed on. Bad news. We're going. You're staying. In terms of the shoot, I'm hoping that everything's going to go uh, well. I'm hoping that there's not going to be too many problems. I'm really hoping that there's not going to be any accidents. Endgame has a few aspects which are relatively risky. There is a stunt uh, where the character Martin is falling through a ceiling. Um, that obviously has to be done by a stuntman who is a trained individual. He knows exactly how to fall and he can do it safely. There's also uh, weapons. Um, within the film. Um, most of the time they will be replicas so they won't be able to fire at all. However, on one of the days um, we actually need to see the guns firing so there will be blank firing weapons. In order to do that safely you have to have an armourer um, as part of the crew. The basic idea for Endgame uh, started off with a well, nightmare that I had uh, about 18 months ago and 
it was just the very last part of Endgame, uh, the idea of being betrayed by somebody that you have complete and utter faith and confidence in, um, that really sort of resulted in that nightmare. I sort of woke up sort of shaking and sweating. And it's one of those things as a filmmaker or as, or as a writer, if you ever get a good idea or an experience like that, you just write it down straight away. I decided to work on Endgame because it was a great opportunity uh, to make what I considered to be a decent drama. Um, the script is very tight and well written. It's edge of the seat stuff, it's got a lot of suspense in it, and that I think makes it uh, an enjoyable film to watch. One of the reasons why I chose this genre for a short film is that it's quite an unusual one. I've probably watched about 100 short films in the last year and quite often very sort of character based but I find that in 15 minutes which is what we have for Endgame we don't have much time to get into character and I really enjoy watching action thriller films and not many people are doing it so I just thought well what can we do with 15 minutes how much action can we pack into 15 minutes with a comparatively low budget. The start of the film is quite calm, quite normal, um, lots of nice uh, tracking movements and slow style. Uh, and then suddenly when the subject matter changes and the, the character, the main character is thrown into uh, danger, the colour changes, um, it goes from quite a normal, quite little warm look to it actually. Then suddenly things change and the look changes, it gets much more uh, dark and dank colour wise. And um, we actually change things like shutter angle on the on the camera here to make every little movement that we do handheld uh, more exaggerated. Obviously the background for the story uh, needs to be something that's very dramatic. We need to have uh, a context where this sort of violence can take place. Now, originally I thought of uh, setting it in Iraq against the Iraqi war and I've decided not to do that because just about everything I've done in the past has been uh, war reenactment so I want something different to my showreel. Uh, I then thought about the drugs culture in Birmingham and the gang warfare that's going on there and then I thought we'd be into lock, stock and two smoking barrels territory. So the third option was, well, let's look at the sort of paramilitary situation in Northern Ireland. And I know that that's something that's been rehashed many, many times and I, that was a worry or a concern for me to sort of go into that sort of area. But I think that what we're doing is using it literally as a sort of dramatic context for a, a thriller. Uh, I don't see any politics creeping into the film at all. Throughout the uh, development of the script, he's taken advice from people in Belfast who have been able to say, well, maybe the name of that person or the name of that street might um, give an impression of it being either Catholic or Protestant, um, and which is something that he really wanted to avoid. Uh, people do use the subject of the Troubles quite a lot. Um, normally, they do show the sectarian vibe divide. You're normally aware almost immediately of who's Catholic and who's Protestant. We're not aware of that in this film. And I think there's a wider context here that uh, reflects on what's going on in Iraq with Al-Qaeda, with terrorism and paramilitary operations around the world. I think we all know somebody from, especially being from Northern Ireland, the idea just because someone's a teacher, you know, is not involved in anything. Or, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's very easy that you can be in a high position and still be involved. And as a sleeper, as someone who's just involved in the, in planning stuff, then you, you don't need to be. The, the, the portray, the, the, see the whole idea is you can have this tough guy, the tough guy image, the guy who walks down with tattoos and a, and a big pit bull terrier and jeans. No, yeah, that's not the way it is. It has never been that way in Northern Ireland. You know, and I think people, especially people in Northern Ireland, they'll, they'll, they'll nod nicely and they'll think, yeah, I can believe that. Stereotypes are a funny one really because everybody says you must avoid stereotypes but stereotypes do exist for a reason. However, um, I don't think we really have got stereotypes in Endgame and in fact the whole point of the film is to throw stereotypes on their head so a person who you think is a family man is actually a terrorist. If people were to ask me how confident I feel uh, as an Englishman about representing Northern Ireland or the people of Northern Ireland um, I say I don't think I am representing the people of Northern Ireland, I'm just uh, making a thriller and I don't speak for the people of Northern Ireland. The people of Northern Ireland are very capable of speaking for themselves. Uh, sometimes I think it's good to see a story as an outsider. Somebody asked me very early on when I was getting involved, do you think that as an Englishman it's fair to be doing a story about Northern Ireland? Uh, and my response to that would be, well, you're saying that Ridley Scott would have to be an ancient Roman before he could make a film like Gladiator. Uh, or that all the people who make EastEnders actually come from the East End. Because they don't, they're probably called Tristram and they come from Devon or from the North Counties. One of the important things that we're trying to get across in the film is the, the notion or the theme 
of urban regeneration. There are a lot of shots of uh, buildings going up. Uh, indeed, the area where we've placed Martin in his house uh, is right opposite a building site. So you are seeing two sides. And as a metaphor, I think that's going to work uh, in a way of saying Northern Ireland is now to crossroads. Uh, we can go this way, we can go forwards, with regeneration, or we can go backwards to these bad old ways, the bad old ways that we're showing in this film. And that, I think, is a strong point that we'd like to get across. Mm -hmm.